Good evening. Welcome to the Buck Stops here. I'm Bishnu Shom. On the program this evening are the national security advisor level talks between India and Pakistan virtually over before they've even begun. Today's been a truly bizarre day. First, Hurriyat leaders in Kashmir were detained ahead of the talks. Then they were released. Then India said Hurriyat leaders will not be permitted to meet the Pakistani national security advisor Sartaj Aziz when he's here on Sunday. And now, just in the last little while, Pakistan has hardened its position, making it clear that the reception invite to the Hurriyat conference stands and that India's red lines will not dictate Pakistan's agenda. Well, it's been a truly, truly bizarre day and we'll bring you these latest developments. But we also spoke to Farooq Abdullah, the former chief minister, at a time when first Hurriyat leaders were detained and then they were released mysteriously. What sort of messages was India trying to send to the Hurriyat? What sort of messages was India trying to send to Pakistan? So first they were detained, then they were undetained. Apparently, the government is trying to send a message to Pakistan that we, are, we mean business. But what message has actually gone out in the process? Well, I think you should realize one thing, that uh, Mufti Saab does not have the teeth to take action against the very people who have put him in the chair here. Uh, that is very clear. Huryat has been its supporter, and I think he didn't want them arrested, and he has done so. The talks basically are with India, between India and Pakistan, and that also on terrorism. Now, you should also know one thing very clearly, and people of India should know, that Hurriyat has been funded for a long time, both by India as well as by Pakistan. So what are they talking about? But Dr. Abdullah, the, the allegation... Of Dr. Abdullah, the allegation is that it was the Chief Minister, uh, Mufti Saab, who actually got them detained in the first place because he was acting on an order from the centre, and you're saying that he also got them taken out of detention because of his own political compulsions. Uh, it, either way, yes, it sends it out a very confusing you. signal. It is clear. So ahead of the talks... It is very clear. Right. So, sir, my question, original one, ahead of the talks, what message does this send to Pakistan? Well, I don't think it sends any message because Pakistan has always spoken to Hurriyat, whether you like it or I like it. The tragedy is that government of India has never spoken to the people who stand with India. They have ignored us all the time. At least Pakistan is accepting their friends. But Dr. Abdullah, let me ask you this. Would it be okay or do you believe it would be okay if Hurriyat leaders were to meet Sartaj Aziz, the Pakistani NSA, after the talks take place? Is it a question of timing of this meeting? Should it happen? Look, it is up to Sartaj Aziz and Hurriyat to decide whether they want to see the talks collapse or whether they want to see talks get to some position whereby India and Pakistan can progress to the future settlement of other issues. Farooq Saab, do you believe, and uh, this is a, 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 a conspiratorial uh, sort of uh, question in a sense, it's a view held by some that both India and Pakistan are not really interested in these talks and the Hurriyat is the card that both sides are playing. Pakistan said that we are going to meet Hurriyat leaders, India said that is not acceptable, we have gone and detained them one way or the other, it's a game of brinkmanship ahead of the talks, nobody really wants to talk for so many reasons. One reason of course what's happening on the LC and the border. Well, I think it is very, very tragic what is happening on the border. I see my people being killed every day, morning, noon and night. So what are they talking about? First, this bombing should stop. If Pakistan is not ready to stop this bombing, then what is the stop going to achieve? I fully agree with the foreign minister, ex-foreign minister of the BJP who said, that these talks are not going to lead to anything. And I also agree with him, they are not going to lead to anything. Okay. Sir, uh, the talks you say are not going to really lead to anything. Uh, we'll see which way the talks actually goes. Hopefully, there'll be a little bit of de-escalation on the, on the line of control and border. Just hopefully, there'll be fewer civilian and, and armed forces casualties. But let me ask you this, sir. Getting back to the question of the Hudiyat. Now, 
Omar uh, has tweeted a little while earlier on that in the past, no Jammu and Kashmir government has actually detained all party Hurriyat conference leaders from meeting the Pakistan High Commission. Since if this is the case, and I believe it is, what sort of precedent has been set by the actions of this morning, even though it has been reversed? I think it shows how weak we are here in this government and the decision this government takes that it turns it over within an hour shows what this government is worth. And Farooq Saab, you believe that it's the Jammu and Kashmir government which has done it? it there is no pressure from the centre? You believe it's a, uh, a decision for them? Was, was, was their own decision to detain? I think their own in decision? detention, yeah. I think the detention was definitely the government of Jammu and Kashmir at the advice of the centre. I do not know who has then advised that they should be released. That is not known to me. And the only person you should speak to is Mufti Saab if he ever has the courage to face your camera. Uh, Farooq Saab, uh, do you believe they should have been detained until these talks ended? I think first, the talks are not to decide on Kashmir. Let's make that clear. The talks were basically against terrorism. So where is the need of Hurriyat? What is Hurriyat going to advise on terrorism? Point taken, sir. But my question is specific. So I don't, I don't see. I think it's only Pakistan trying to show the world that the Hurriyat is the true representatives of Kashmir. And tragedy is, those who are true representatives of Kashmir, India doesn't care a tuppence about them. Sir, last question to you. Uh, just linked to what you said a little while back, you said you aren't at all optimistic of anything coming off these, off these talks. Sir, uh, not, not, even, not even an element of peace being restored to the line of control and the border, not even that. And the reason I ask that, sir, is if you look at the UFA declaration, it's primarily meant at de-escalation. These NSA-level talks are meant to deal with terrorism. BSF talks are meant to de-escalate tensions on the border. Uh, it's a process of easing tensions, at least militarily. On the, you, you believe not even that will happen, sir? You see, Prime Minister of India and Prime Minister of Pakistan spoke. Yes. When they spoke, terrorism should have stopped there. This bombing should have stopped then. What is Sartar Jaziz or our National Security Advisor going to do? They're just mere servants. Pakistan is ruled by the army. Let's make that clear to ourselves. And therefore, Nawaz Sharif and his government has no stake in what is happening over here. I am sure they have no say. It is the Pakistani army that decides the things. All right, Farooq Abdullah, not at all optimistic about what might transpire on Sunday. Should it transpire at all? My colleague Nidhi Razdan now joins me on the phone line. Nidhi, uh, is there a sense now that these talks might be over even before they've begun? Well, at the moment, Vishnu, it's really hard to say what's going to happen this Sunday because we've got very two uh, strident positions being taken by both governments as we speak tonight. Government sources here in India have told NDTV that India will not allow the Hurriyas to meet the Pakistani NSA, even if they've been invited to a public reception on Sunday evening, which they have. The Indian government believes that the Pakistanis will meet the Hurriyat leadership in a separate room and then basically uh, sell it a, a, as a meeting later in the form of a press release and photographs and so on, and, and therefore it would be equivalent to having talks. In any case, uh, the line in Delhi is very clear that uh, the Hurriyat leadership will be placed under house arrest and detained and will not be allowed to come to Delhi if indeed they do make that intention clear. And one official has actually said to me that if Sartaj Aziz wants to call off the talk, even after landing in Delhi, so be it, he is welcome to take the next flight back. Uh, however, I do wonder here, given the way India-Pakistan relations have been over the years, whether there could be any last-minute compromise, Vishnu. Uh, will uh, India, for instance, allow the Hurriyat leadership to meet uh, the uh, Pakistani NSA after the talks have taken place? That window looks very, very bleak right now, but that is a possibility we are raising. We've also heard from Pakistani officials tonight, Pakistani government officials, who really hardened their stand saying that the so-called Indian red lines will not dictate their agenda. We will not be browbeaten on Kashmir. We are firm on our invite to the Hurriyat to our reception. And the cancelling of the Commonwealth need today signals our position on Kashmir. So both sides very, are taking very hardened positions, Vishnu. But the Indian government is clear. The ball is in Pakistan's court. If Sartaj Aziz decides to call off the talks, 
That's their problem. As far as India is concerned, it will allow these talks to go on if they focus only on terror, but that the Hurriyas will not be allowed to be a third party. All right, Nidhi, thank you very much for joining us. Well, joining us at this stage uh, from Srinagar, Mirwais Omar Farooq, the leader of the Hurriyat Conference. Uh, Mirwais, thank you very much for speaking to us today. You've seen the hardlining of positions in India and Pakistan. It all has to do with you. You seem to be very much a pawn being played out by hardliners uh, on both sides, India and Pakistan. And it really boils down to this, whether or not you attend a reception called by the Pakistan High Commission on Sunday. If you do attend, there is a possibility the talks will not happen. If you do not attend, then Pakistan might decide that they may not want to engage in talks at all. What are you going to do? I think, Vishnu, you have to understand that it is not about the Hurriyat. It is basically about the issue of Kashmir. And I believe that, you know, I mean, uh, um, the government of India has to accept the fact that the core issue between the two countries remains Kashmir. It, this issue cannot be ignored. Hurriyat is not a party or a, or a, or a group. It's, a, it's an ideology. It's a sentiment. And I think this sentiment has been accepted in the past by the government of India and it needs to be accepted today. Meanwhile, because, you the, know, I mean, the government of India Huriyat has said these are the talks media. on terror. This was what UFA was all about, de-escalating no, terror and tensions no. on the borders. See, the larger I issue mean, of Kashmir uh, is not what India needs to... That okay, go ahead. No, the, the, the fact remains that, you know, whatever the issues are between India and Pakistan, whether it's terror, whether it's trade, whether it's Samjota, whether it's, you know, cross-border, everything is, is, is more or less, uh, you know, uh, related to Kashmir. I mean, I mean, let us accept the fact that what is the core issue? I mean, India and Pakistan have gone to war three times over Kashmir. No. I mean, we saw what happened, was happening right now at the LOC. People are, innocents are getting killed. I mean, we, we want India and Pakistan to talk. It is in the interest of the people of Kashmir that India and Pakistan should be no, talking and they should be discussing. If you want India but and Pakistan to talk, we have a right to, to ask that, you know. And I, if you want India and Pakistan to talk, then why will you come over here and, and, and ensure, almost guarantee that that will not take place? No, because I think that, you know, Huriyat is coming with the intention to uh, not only project our point of view, which is that, you know, while supporting India and Pakistan dialogue, India and Pakistan have to also address our sensitivities. It's about the people, uh, Vishnu. I mean, for the last 70 years, this is the third generation of Kashmiris who are living in, in, in you know, instability, who we are not, uh, you know, we don't know how things turn out. I mean, right now, imagine a situation in Punch, in the Balakot sector, people are leaving their houses, continuous bombing is going on. I mean, we want a political solution. So, we have every Mirai's, right to tell I understand the what you're saying. Pakistan you want a solution that is that is what your core agenda is but tell me this are you coming for that reception on sunday yes or no well as far as now the invitation stands and the huriyat is planning to come for the reception so you will you talk on the one hand about about the violence on the line of control and the border and yet you will come for one or two hours or whatever it may be meet mr sartaj aziz talk political issues with him compromise the process of talks and in the process perhaps allow that shelling which is happening to take place. No, I think one of the agendas of the Hurriyat is definitely going to be that we, uh, you know, seek that there should be an end to the, uh, you know, this violation of, uh, of hostility. I mean, right now, the hostilities which are going on at the LOC. Definitely, that is one part of it. But at the same time, our focus is going to be that if India and Pakistan are going to talk uh, issues, uh, let, let it be also include Kashmir because the core issue is Kashmir. That is the main issue. And uh, unless and until that issue is settled or there is some mechanism evolved by both the sides to address this Kashmir, issue. I don't see honestly India and Pakistan, even if the agenda is not Kashmir or something else is there, I don't see honestly so any movement forward on the agenda. a process of talks which is going to be just on one day. He arrives on Sunday, the talks that they're working out the schedule, they're likely to be on Monday. In one day, surely you don't expect the issue of Kashmir to be resolved. So therefore, given the fact that these no, are the limited fact. talks... These are I understand. limited talks. I think, no, I understand. Why, why can't we be pragmatic that, on we, what we, we can achieve? We, we take the point. We take the point that in one day nothing is going to happen. And even on terrorism, nothing will happen in one day. So I think uh, what I'm trying to say is not that, you know, India should be or Pakistan should be talking on this agenda or that agenda. What we are saying is that is, hasn't the time come 
when mr modi is himself saying in dubai yesterday i heard him that at the end of the day everybody has come to the table you know even after awards we have to come to the table and address issues what is the main issue the main issue is kashmir the main issue is resolution of this problem that is the key to peace sir, and stability and progress but meanwhile is the issue is terrorism how can there be positive developments or a forward process with pakistan unless terrorism stops i i guarantee you i guarantee you uh, vishnu let india and pakistan take make some progress let there be some movement forward i mean why do you why do you underestimate the fact that even uh, it was the same bjp government at the time of mr vajpayee when he took he walked that extra mile he said that let us talk in the ambit of humanity which is bigger than the ambit but, of constitution but he tell me reached this. out to the people of kashmir he reached out to pakistan so there was some movement but forward there was some you know indian to pakistan there was a ceasefire was all about no, no, it let, was about just, moving forward no i mean you you had you had you had 13 years of ceasefire I mean, 2003 to till date. No, we didn't. I mean, no, that ceasefire stood because there was good faith that at least the process was moving on. Mirwais, uh, let me ask you this, and I don't know if this is a solution remotely acceptable to uh, to our country's leadership. Would you be willing to delay meeting the Pakistani NSA till after the talks with the government of India are over? See. we do, we don't want to make it a point of prestige uh, you know uh, vishnu it doesn't matter even after the talks if they are going to have uh, you so know talks about it it's not a, it's not a why it's don't a, you're talking about prestige I mean, I, and are you and, and you are a pragmatic man so why don't you therefore tell the pakistani high commissioner you are in favor of peace you are in favor of of de escalation you are in favor of forward movement therefore if this is an issue between both countries india and pakistan then why don't you meet or try to meet after the talks are over see first thing thing is that this is not an issue between india and pakistan that is the main problem hurriyat no, stand but, is very clear but, that this is an issue between india pakistan and the people of jammu and kashmir so let let let, let you me are uh, stating, you know you are stating your straight. political position again we come back to the same thing this is a one day talk it's a few no, no. hours i i'm saying that as far as the, as as far as the reception is concerned i think that is very clear i think the reception was supposed to be on sunday after the uh, talks uh, uh, were uh, you know no, held sir. during the day sir, so the i don't think that should to be, be on meet. monday be... you are going to meet before on I mean, sunday maybe evening. there's a change in plan now but initially what what was said that the reception is i mean first of all the issue is that you know even these are not official talks what we are asking is that we want dialogue and official talks with both india and pakistan it's just a reception Meanwhile, and even if new delhi is not ready to accept huriyat on a reception tell me what kind of a, a situation and a bonhomme are we talking about that even you can't accept the huriyat uh, uh, you know f- uh, over a cup of tea at the pakistan hamishan because india no, says that, you know you why. huriyat's position is unacceptable Meanwhile, Meanwhile, i'll tell you why the government of india's belief and sources telling us strong sources telling us that pakistan will take irrespective of when you meet them whether it is after the talks or before the talks they will make a spectacle of meeting you that will become their core uh, uh, that will become their core achievement out of these talks they will feed us a, a domestic and possibly an international uh, viewership or readership saying that look what we have achieved we've gone there and we've we we met the we we've stuck it to the indians and we've gone and we've met the the mirwais uh, over there irrespective of what the process or irrespective of what new delhi wanted a spectacle will be made delhi doesn't want that 